Hi, my name is Laura Coyle, and in this tutorial, I'm going to do a demonstration of how to make pattern fill swatches in Adobe Illustrator. And this is for CS4 and CS5. And this demonstration relates specifically to my class, Automatic Patterns. And Automatic Patterns is a class that provides you with four templates. And then in the class, I show you how the templates work so that you can customize them uh, for your own purposes. But you can see right here what I'm doing is uh, scaling an element, moving it around, and I have a repeat pattern here that's updating on the artboard. And this is not CS6. I am in CS6 right now, but uh, the class was designed for working with in CS4 and CS5. So it's pretty nice to be able to do this in CS4 and CS5. And so in this class, the templates are designed to make it easy to take the patterns that you create and export image files from them so that you can use them on Spoonflower for printing yardage. You can export just a single unit of a repeat. You can export images to use in your portfolio. So if you have a pattern design portfolio. So I show you all of that in the class, but the one thing I don't show you is how to take the artwork from class and make it into a pattern fill swatch. And that way you can apply it as a fill to any vector shape in any artwork that you have in Illustrator. So the first demonstration I'm going to do is using this grid repeat. It's a two inch grid repeat. So if you have the templates, go ahead and get it out and we'll start working on making a pattern fill swatch from the artwork. Now this is a basic or grid style repeat and we'll do a half drop repeat next. So most of the steps apply to the half drop repeat as well. It's just a little bit different. So I'll show you that. But here we are in this grid repeat and you can see uh, in outline mode. The only art I have is up here in the upper left corner. The rest of the art that you see here is created by those transform effects. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is go down here to the repeat layer and drag it down uh, to the new layer icon and make a copy of it. Then uh, before I get confused, I'm going to lock and hide the original. So I can just keep that separately. And this layer, uh, to keep things straight, I'm going to double click here and rename it. Uh, let's see, I'll name it Swatch. That way, I'll know what this is for. Okay, and so all I need to do now is um, I'm just, everything else is locked. I'm just on the Swatch layer. And I'm going to do uh, Select All to select all the art on this layer, just that little bit up there in the corner. And then I'm going to expand it by going up to the object menu and down to expand appearance. And what that does, as you can see here in outline mode, now we have art all over. So the copies have been expanded and now we no longer have transform effects applied to this layer. So the next step is to turn off the background layer. And I really only need enough to make this two by two inch swatch here. So here on the swatch layer, I'm going to create a square two by two and give it the same background color and let's, I'll turn off this mask layer so we can see it. All right, so this is the background of my swatch. Let me send it to back and I have it selected here and it needs to um, align perfectly to the second artboard. So I'm going to go to my artboards panel and uh, select the second artboard to make it the active artboard. And then when I go up here to my align commands, um, I just make sure that I have it um, aligned to artboard checked. So that's how the alignment is going to act here. And if I click a couple of these, icons, it's aligned exactly to the second artboard. Now you can't see my artboards here because I turned them off uh, just because it's nicer to design without them, without seeing the lines in there. But I know that this is aligned to that second artboard. And if you're in CS4 and you don't have the artboards panel, you just need to click on the artboard to make it active. In that case, you should turn artboards visibility on in the view menu. Okay, so here we are. I've got uh, what pretty much looks like a pattern fill swatch, except for I have a lot more art than I need. Let me look back at the layers panel here, and I'm on the swatch layer, and so really what I need to do is, this is grouped, um, and I need to get rid of all this art here. So one really quick way to do this, working with um, uh, expanded art, is by using the eraser tool, so that's Shift E to get the eraser tool. It's right here in the tool panel, and then hold down Option or Alt, 
And when you do that, you can use the eraser tool in a marquee fashion. So I'm going to go kind of close here, but not, not so close that I have to worry about cutting out anything that uh, might be crossing the boundary of that repeat unit because that's what makes uh, a pattern seamless. Um, and let me do that again. So we'll go up in this direction. And it takes Illustrator a minute. You know, it spins for just a second while it's um, erasing the art for the large amount of art that it was erasing. Okay, now I can just zoom in. And I have more than I need here, but better to be safe than sorry. I've got everything that's crossing the boundary of this uh, two by two inch square. The last step now is to add the no fill, no stroke bounding shape uh, that I talk about a lot. That's the key to making a pattern fill swatch in Illustrator. So I'm going to use the bounding shape to do that. I'm going to click on it here and then uh, copy Commander Control C and then Commander Control B to send the copy, I mean to paste the copy in the back. Um, and then I'm going to use that copy of the background shape to make the no fill, no stroke bounding shape, uh, just changing the color here to none. Okay, and I always like to send it to back again just to make sure, because that's the really crucial thing about fill swatches is that you have that, uh, it's basically a masking shape, a bounding shape, uh, at the very back of, of the stack of all of this artwork, and then it serves as a mask. Um, and you'll see what I mean when I group all of this and then drag it into the panel. I'll back out here and create a nice shape here and then apply the swatch art to it. So that was pretty easy and I'll show you on a half drop repeat next. Okay so here I am with our four inch half drop repeat template from class and I have already taken uh, the steps that we have in common with the grid repeat and that is to uh, copy the repeat layer and go ahead and expand all the art on here so you can see that this is all actual art transform effects are gone from this layer and so I've renamed this layer swatch and uh, and then so the next step picking up where we left off is to turn off the background layer and create uh, the background shape for the swatch on the swatch layer so I'll get my rectangle tool here and the big difference with um, a half drop repeat is that your swatch is actually going to be twice as wide as the original unit and uh, just as high as the original unit. So in this case, we have a 4x4 four four inch unit to start with. So we're going to go with an 8x4, eight, 8 inches wide and 4 inches high. And so this background, and let me turn it the right color and send it to back. So this background will um, accommodate enough of the offset um, so that will factor into the repeat. So that's the special thing that you have to do um, for a half drop repeat swatch. Okay, so uh, next I want to also align this to the second artboard like I did before. Um, so in the artboards panel, I'll make the second artboard the active artboard. And then up here on the control panel, I've got align to artboard checked, so we got that right. And then I'm going to use the icon, the first icon that aligns it on the left side of the artboard. And then I'm going to um, use this icon here that aligns it to the top of the artboard. So basically what I have here is this left half of the, of the background is aligned perfectly to that second artboard. And then there's just basically another four inches uh, that are, that's going out here to the right. Um, and so then the next step, and I, you know, it's always good to check to make sure these things are exact, make sure it's aligned perfectly with the artboard. Go up and look here when you have it selected, you can see in the top control bar that this is in fact exactly eight inches wide by four inches tall. Okay, so it's good to confirm those uh, measurements. And then back to the eraser tool here in the tool panel and holding down option or alt like I did before so that you can marquee. I just love the way this works. It takes a second sometimes but uh, it saves you a lot of time and I'm just getting close enough here to uh, not miss any oops whoops I gotta hold down option or alt. I don't want to miss anything that might be crossing uh, the boundary of the repeat, that eight by four inch. Okay, 
So I'll zoom in again and there it is. Now the only thing I have left to do is create that no fill, no stroke bounding shape. So I'm using that background shape here. I'm going to command or control C to copy and then command or control B to paste in back. And then I need to go up to the color panel here and change the fill to none. So now it's truly no fill, no stroke. Um, it's at the very back of all of this artwork here on this layer. And then I can select it all. I like to group it. You don't have to, but to me, I, I just like having it grouped for later. Um, and then drag it into the panel, and there's my swatch. Now, the swatch looks a little unusual, um, and uh, hopefully it will work. It should. Okay, so here's a rectangle, and then I'm applying the swatch to it. And there it is. It works really well. Um, but if it doesn't work the first time, you know, always check that bounding shape uh, because that's the very thing that will usually uh, cause it to fail. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful to you. And if you want to check out the class Automatic Patterns, it's on ReneePearson.com. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Coil Art, and that's C-O-Y-L-E-A-R-T. And then you can get updates of when I post more tutorials. So thank you for watching.